Agni parthene de spina Akhrande the otoke Time is coming when men will go mad, when they, and when they see someone who is not mad, they will attack him, saying, You are mad. You are not like us. Hello, my name is Nathaniel Harmon, the host of the Road to Paradise podcast with my co-host Ian Silver, who is joining me, or rather, I am joining him in his studio, for another edition of Nate's Rants, which typically posts to Instagram, but this is probably going to be a little bit longer than that. So, yeah, well, welcome, uh, Ian. Uh, thank you for having me in my own home. It's actually in your office. Oh, okay. Slash apartment. <laughs> but yeah, um, I think this is going to be quite an interesting topic. It's something we've been trying to talk about for a little bit. And not that like we're late to the train per se, but <laughs> there's uh, plenty of videos uh, about this topic. We've just had some audio issues. We're almost dialed in completely. So hopefully there's no issues with this. We recorded... Um, uh, a really know. awesome episode on St. Mary of Egypt, but the audio yeah. was corrupted. So from that, I will presume, and I think Ian concurs with me, that uh, God allowed that to happen. Yeah, who knows what we had. Probably because something. of our own idiocy as well, but... Exactly. You know. So yeah, um, today's topic is quite a controversial one. And yeah, today we're going to be... controversial if you don't believe in science, Ian. True. Well, <laughs> you know... Yeah, but today we're going to talk about Disney coming out of the closet and uh, pretty much officially announcing that that they're gay and they, <laughs> they have um, an agenda, which as most people That's know... so utterly shocking. I never could have guessed that. Yeah, me either. I mean, going back to like The Little Mermaid, remember the, remember the cover of Little Mermaid? What's on it? Have you seen that? So I'm not going to lie, dude. I have more recently read the fairy tale, The Little Mermaid, than I have watched the movie. So I have yeah. no idea what it looks like. Not to say that that was recent either. I mean, that's been high school, so that's been a while back. Yeah, but basically, I mean, we don't have we don't have to show it, but there's uh, some phallic symbols going oh, on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I do remember going seeing on. this. Uh yeah, I remember seeing this discussed at one point. There we go. So you now can't really we see can't it. Unsee but that. <laughs> there's some phallic symbols, and I mean, this is one of their. That was in know, like '93 or '94. Yeah, that it's came out? it's an old old movie, old. But there's been a lot of things that they've been kind of, you know, putting in there subliminally, not just, uh, you know, homosexual things. There's like satanic stuff. There's a lot of stuff within Disney. That's been there, and especially, you know, I have a, a six-year-old boy, and it's hard to, there. I mean, because they do have some good movies, and it's not right. everything that's completely, has, has been completely infiltrated by whatever agenda it may be, but I've officially decided to stop paying for the Disney Plus, which sucks because I liked watching uh, The Book of Boba Fett and all the Star Wars. The Mandalorian was awesome. Yeah, but I know that's not going to be awesome for that much longer either. You know, they're, eventually they're going to do something something in there where like comes out that the Mandalorian's actually transgender or something. So, but I, yeah, I really, well, okay. In, in all fairness to Disney, the woman who kind of invented Mandalorian culture for star Wars in one of the last star Wars novels she wrote actually had a homosexual Mandalorian couple with kids. Great. And that was in like 2007. For anyone who wondered, who's wondering, it's uh, was that in a book? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's one of the last Karen Travis novels. The the whole, not Bloodlines, but another another one of those ones that follows the uh, the the exploits of the Mandalorians from a more positive light rather than the ridiculous um, space Kardashian point of view, which is the Skywalker storyline. Yeah, but with all that being said, I don't think. Um, Disney is hiding anything at all anymore, and we're here to talk about that. And we will tie it back to medieval, the medieval worldview, actually, which Ian may be surprised about. But cool. I have recently come across an interesting article that will allow us to do that. 
Is it uh, about like transgenderism in the medieval times? I've seen some stuff like that surfacing recently. No, actually, it's the. I think I sent it to you. It's it's that um, uh, piece that Eugene uh, Vodolozkin wrote. He's for anyone who doesn't know, he's the philologist and Russian medievalist uh, that wrote that novel Loris that came out in like 2014. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's I think you sent really it to awesome me, novel, but, but just, it's, a, it's a really cool article as well. well just like just like up. everything you send me, I don't read. Well, I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's a pretty long read, and it's also very nuanced, <laughs> but it's a really cool read. So we will tie this back to medieval philosophy and worldview. All right. So, I mean, I guess the first thing that we can do is dive right into it. There's some some stuff we're going to read, and, uh, you know, we'll put some links in the description if you'd like. But basically, we're going we're gonna to read some stuff and show a few videos from you know Disney executives and people that are high up in Disney or have played in different roles on the Disney Channel, dating back you know to the uh, Proud Family. If anybody remembers that show, when it wasn't Proud family, yeah, it wasn't even. It was about a a, a black family, an African American family, and it was more so just like embracing the heritage of being African American. When did that come out? I mean, I oh, that's, watched, a, that's, that's like an a Disney old one. Kids one, but right? now it's kind of funny that it's called the Proud Family and they're being openly gay. It's like. It's, oh, that's it's oh, perfect. Wow. So yeah, uh, let's. Uh, anything else that you want to say before we get into this? I guess real quick. Sorry, I'm gonna do some some housekeeping. Uh, all the beard oil, minus a few to Canada and Australia, have shipped, and those people we've talked because the website wasn't charging people for shipping to Canada and Australia. So yeah, I've I've since fixed that. It's like an extra twenty bucks, but we throw in some goodies. All the beard oil's been been shipped. And uh, Patreon is up and running. If you guys want to help out with Patreon, that'd be great. Our goal... Shout out to all our new subscribers. Thank yeah, you guys. Yeah, we're going to be doing some exclusive stuff. This will be available um, to you prior. And then me and Nathan are probably going to figure out something to do. But subscribe to Patreon. I want to try to do a $200 goal by the end of the month. 500 you know, in the next few months. Which, if you think about it, we have almost 6,500 followers on Orthodox Logos. If one person, you know, 500 people give $1... That really, really helps out. I know that's like... And also for all you guys in the Orthodox Logos page, why aren't you on the Road to Paradise page? We're, we're hovering, we've are we been hovering around 1,000 for like... Yeah, it goes up month. and down. We're at 995, so get like 25 of you guys over there and we'll break 1,000 and that'll be awesome. And then Ian and I will do something. Yeah, we'll do a giveaway we'll, we'll or do something. A, a video or a giveaway if you smoke tobacco. Maybe I'll mix up a proprietary blend and send it your way. Yeah, and also yeah. Uh, Dokken was supposed to be on. He had some uh, prior engagements that, that came up, so we're going to be rescheduling that. I've got a list of people. There's going to be a lot coming out soon. I know I've been saying that, but <laughs> with Lent, uh, a lot of the people are clergy or Orthodox in general, and just like uh, you've probably noticed right. here, we've been kind of taking a little bit easy. But We are two weeks out of Pascha as well, Yeah. so I mean, the next couple of weeks are going to be pretty light with some of that posting, just yeah. because Holy Week, we should be... I mean, throughout the entirety of Lent, we should be focusing on the spiritual things, but especially during Holy Week, we shouldn't be doing a lot of crazy stuff. So there won't, for Holy Week, there won't be nearly as much posting, but uh, we will respond to messages in a somewhat timely fashion, and uh, maybe we'll make a video at the beginning of Holy Week or something like that on, yeah, uh, on Palm Sunday. That'd be good. But yeah, besides that, uh, everything's been going pretty well, just struggling. <laughs> struggling uh fruitfully but yeah let's go ahead and get into this i'll pull this up real quick and yeah we'll we'll read some of this stuff so the first article is from disneyfanatic.com i'm not entirely sure it's a uh, curious which, name yeah i'm not entirely sure which way this bends um well they cite chris rufo in this don't they i, be I believe so yeah but Either way, it's it's pretty good. It kind of just gets to the point. I'm I'm not exactly sure which which way it goes. Like uh, there was some stuff I wanted to pull up, but it had you know kind of a conservative tinge to it. So I decided we'll try to stay neutral about you know where we get the sources, <laughs> but the topic in general we probably won't be very neutral on. All right. So yeah, this is a uh, Disney not at all secret gay agenda, and they've announced that they're going to try to do 50 percent, if not more, LGBTQ plus I, A, X, Y, W, Z leads for kids shows, which 
is great. But yeah, there's been some leaked footage of of an all hands meeting at the Walt Disney Company regarding regarding the Florida bill, um, also known as the Don't Say Gay bill. If you want, you know, that link, we could we can put that in the description. But it shows the executives and higher ups. Big outright. shocker! It doesn't actually say that. Yeah, it doesn't say the word <laughs> gay at all in it. But it shows the executives and hires up outright planning to inject more LGBTQ plus content into children's programming. And first up is executive producer Latoya Revenue. Raveno. Raveno, which, um, yeah. So she said that the allowance and even push for what she called her not at all secret gay agenda was already in motion when she got to the studio. And as she touches on, that was in the 90s. Right. So let's let her talk in her own words. Yeah, so we'll go so, ahead and play this. Let, lest you think that Ian and I are putting words in her mouth. Observe. <laughs> it's like, I love Disney's content. I grew up watching, you know, all of the classics. They have been a huge, like, informative <laughs> part of my life. But at the same time, like... I worked at small studios most of my career and I'd heard, you know, you hear whispers. Like I, I'd heard things like, oh, you know, they won't let you show this at a Disney show. And I'm like, okay. So I was a little like sus when I started. And, but then my experience was bafflingly the opposite of what I had heard on my little pocket of like, you know, proud family, Disney TVA. Um, the showrunners were super welcoming, Meredith Roberts and like the, the our leadership over there has been so welcoming to like my like not at all secret gay agenda and so like i i feel like i felt like it was i mean like maybe it was that way in the past but i guess like something must have happened in the last like like they were turning it around they're going hard and then all that like momentum that i felt like that sense of i don't have to be afraid to like Let's have these two characters kiss. Let's in the background. This like I was just wherever I could, just basically adding queerness to like the. If you see anything queer in the show, I'm proud of them. But like I, I just was like, no one would stop me, and no one was trying to stop me. Yeah. What so, a gem. So yeah, we we. S- <laughs> what, what what thoughts do you have on that, Ian? Well, to be charitable. Uh, to the best of my abilities, uh, I th- I think it's I just think it's kind of sad. I mean, uh, she said, "If you see anything gay, that was me." Uh, yeah, I I don't I don't know. I just think it's it's her not so secret gay agenda that's been pushed from the beginning, and we have to remember that you know, who their target audience is. Right. It's not like there's, I mean, obviously there's some older people watching it too, but. Well, the book of Boba Fett and the Mandalorian are probably the most obvious uh, bits of, of work that are targeting people who are not 10. Yeah. But they can be, I mean, that, that's something that's going to be appealing to any 10 year old boy. I mean, I can't speak for you, Ian, but when I was a little kid, you know, the, the original trilogy was all that there was to watch. Oh. And I was like, I was all about uh, Return of the Jedi because it had Boba Fett in it, actually. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, with that being said, it's like they've got a wide demographic, but they're obviously doing, they're adding queerness, as she said, mm-hmm. for a reason. Because it's like every, they want, they don't, if, they if want everybody to be gay. Correct. The, they did the live action Beauty and the Beast movie a couple of years ago, right? Like on ice? Or... No, the live action. They did like a live action film of Beauty and the Beast. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Didn't they have some, as these people are saying, some gayness in that? Didn't oh, they? for sure. Like, I didn't watch it. I heard rumors that there was something like that, but I don't go out of my way to watch modern Disney film renditions of fairy tales because I tend to find them obnoxious. Yeah, it's just... And the Russian version of Beauty and the Beast is so much better Way than, better. The, than yeah. the German one, but that's beside the point. That might, who knows? That could be a little episode where we compare them. Which one's gayer? <laughs> In what sense of the word? <laughs> Not the yeah. That's the, the original sense. <laughs> that's also another thing. It's like um, I was reading. I forget what I was reading. Uh, I mean, yeah, I was reading Tolkien. I was reading uh, Lord of the Rings, which you know. Oh yeah, they um, use that. they use the word queer like every couple pages, and it's like yep. I'm wondering. I, I believe uh, Barleyman Butterbur uses it all the time. Yeah, 
I'm wondering folks are queer. Folks, folks don't appreciate queer things around these parts or something yeah. like that is what he says, which means weird, right? Or strange. Unusual. Well, strange. it doesn't even mean weird. It means strange. Yeah. So I'm just waiting for the day when they make like a, which actually this might be happening soon with the new Lord of the Rings. I'm waiting for the day where they take that out of context. They're like, oh, Tolkien wanted queerness in here. I'm not going to comment on that because <laughs> doing so has already gotten me in trouble because I didn't control myself. So, yeah. And, and something I just want to add just as like a, a precursor to everything. And as like a, a caveat is, you know, me and Nathan both agree on, on how wrong this stuff is, but me personally, I'm going to say that I'm not sure how you feel, but I think the most important thing to do is to um, welcome people that are struggling with these issues, you know, with love, just like your brother in Christ or your sister in Christ who is struggling with whatever porn addiction or, or drug addiction. It's like these, these people are hurting, they're lonely and they're projecting that outward. And it sucks because they're targeting children. And that's like, well, that's what really upsets me. That puts them the people who are at least trying to influence children in a slightly different camp, because I do have to note for anyone who's going to find anything else that I say to be a little bit on the south of charitable end of things. There is a notion in scripture and in the Holy Fathers that, well, you ought not condemn somebody or judge someone as the, the more archaic language would have it that doesn't mean that all sin is equal, right? Like, yeah. If you've ever read Leviticus, if you're the priest, if you're the high priest's daughter, don't screw around because if you do, that gets you dead. Right. And that's not necessarily the case for other young women. Right. Yeah. Not even other young uh, women whose fathers are in the priesthood. So, and, and additionally, you know, St. Paul has some pretty unpleasant words um, for, alcoholics um I, uh, what does he use um I believe it's in corinthians one of fornicators one of the corinthians you know he's he's got this litany of sins and he's and in that he includes what we would call um homosexuality right and he says he, he kind of talks about all of them in the same way but it's and a lot of people are fond of saying oh well saint paul saint paul recognizes that all these sins are the same and it's like yeah, when you repent of them, he recognizes that Christ forgives you equally and yeah. that you are an equal participant in the life of the church to, to a varying degrees, depending on what precisely you mean by that. But he doesn't mean that that behavior is okay. You have to turn away from it, right? And again, I'm not saying that as someone who has a perfect track record. Anyone who spends five minutes talking to me will become acutely aware of the fact that that is unequivocally not the case. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> same here. I mean, that's, that's kind of the point we're making here. You know, it's like, right. But when, when you are unrepentantly trying to harm other people, children in this specifically case, specifically children, then, and laughing about it in a video saying, well, not oh, even laughing about it. Like, so what would be a good example of this? So if Jeffrey Dahmer, was trying to convince other people to emulate his behavior, right? No Christian would say, well, we have to treat him with love, therefore we can't criticize him and say, yeah, no, you need to be in prison, dude. And anyone who is taking your advice needs to be off the street. Yeah. Right? Or at least, at the very least, depending on the agreement that they have expressed and the way they've expressed that agreement, they have no business working with children, period. And that's just obvious. Ever, until, you know... They, they will die never having had a job that allows them to work with children because that's just too, they, they've opened themselves up to things that they may never completely overcome in this life right and that's the case with all of us right now uh, there's you there, there's very very prominent um uh, Christian youtubers and podcasters who will say they there are particular aspects of um, the internet, they cannot get involved in even ones that aren't necessarily bad because that is a stumbling block into pornography yeah. with them, right? So they just 
don't have access to these things, right? That's not to say that the internet is unequivocally evil and can only be used for porn, but for that person, their interaction, their ability to interact with these things or with the internet specifically has shifted in such a way that they no longer can do so safely. Yeah, it's the same thing with people that have like a, a gambling addiction or, right. or whatever it may be. It's or like alcohol yeah, or that's smoking why there's, or swearing or whatever. That's why there's halfway homes where drugs and alcohol aren't allowed. It's because you got a problem with these things. Right. So we're going to put you in a house with other people who have a problem with these things. And sometimes that's not, not the, the best, best idea, yeah. depending on how things play out. But yeah, but yeah it's so, so all, all that to say, these people are putting forward an ideology that is unequivocally destructive. Evil. And evil. Right. I mean, yeah. And as a result of that. But they, sorry, but they're trying to do it with like this intention that it's good and it's uh, progressive. Well, progress just means moving forward in a particular, on a particular path. Yeah, that it doesn't, doesn't mean good. doesn't make the path good. Yeah. <laughs> like, I will say this. Stalin was a very progressive communist, right? Yeah. Hitler was No very... one else should want to be a progressive communist in that vein because that turned out rather badly. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. For a lot of people, including Stalin. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, th this whole notion that just because you are progressive cloak an idea in positive language necess that it necessarily becomes positive is one of the dumbest rhetorical things that I've seen utilized in modern discourse. And I don't understand why it's okay. You know, when th there's, oh man, like, so, so a, a good example on the contra conservative side, right? Is conservatives will say, well, capitalism is free market and more freedom is good. And it's like, well, not necessarily. Libertinism is necessarily bad. And individualism, in the way that a lot of conservatives talk about it, is bad. Yeah. Right? Especially hyper self-individualism, where it's like... Well, I mean, I would go so far as to say there's no such thing as an individual. But that's a completely different conversation yeah, yeah. For, a diff for a different time. Yeah. But yeah, that's... And that's why this is called Nate's Rants, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I think it, some of you who have watched some of the older ones where I'm sitting in my car trying to figure out how to use Instagram. Yeah. It's sighing so, aggressively well, at the front of the camera. Well, it's like turned the opposite <laughs> way for three minutes and then you're like, oh. It was only like a minute and I a know. half and then I realized what was going on and felt like a dumbass. You've, got, you've gotten better. You're, you're progressive, Nate. Well, I mean, to say that I've gotten better in that regard means that I'm not a caveman. That I've Well, figured it's out. also probably kind of an insult to you. <laughs> It's the thing that you probably don't want to be good at. And I'm forcing you to with like, like today you had like some ideas and I tried to act like they were good. <laughs> I mean, we figured it out, but you're like, how about we try this? I'm like, at one point you asked me to like cut a cord in half and solder, that would have worked. solder it no, together. No, I didn't ask you to do it. I could have done that. But yeah. Um, but yeah. So, so taking this back to the whole Disney coming out of the closet as Ian so eloquently put it. The, I think that's a good way to say it. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. The, the part of the problem is they're cloaking this whole thing under the idea of, well, it's our business. We have the right to free speech. We can say whatever we want. It's our duty to protect the children. Well, I mean, even setting that aside, th this actually touches on the um, on, on the Vodolazkin, or however the heck you say his name, um, paper. He, he he puts in, in his paper he makes the argument that we are descend or not descending that we are moving into a kind of neo medieval period, right? Mm. And when I, I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw that head that that headline, I was like, ah, that's a that's a pretty ballsy claim, you know. I mean, it depends on what you mean by that, but that's a really ballsy claim. But he's not an idiot; he's a really really smart guy. Yeah. So like, okay, well, you know, I know who this guy is. I respect his work, even though I've read very little of it, you know, but, you know, we'll, we'll give the steel college try. And he proceeds to lay out this notion that it's not so much that technologically we're becoming medieval. It's this notion that we are ideologically becoming medieval, the, except now there are secular and religious churches and <laughs> you can't question the dogma. And this is more obvious in the sec on the secular end of things, on, on the what we might call leftist or liberal end of things than it is on the right, although we're starting to see this coalesce on the conservative side of things as well. True. Um, and, and I think 
honestly that the move in this direction is a good thing, even though it's going to be very unpleasant, um, at least rhetorically, for the next however many years it takes for this to finally solidify and people to finally realize what's going on. But they're talking about this whole notion that, okay, the left has, or not even the left. So he's saying, Vodolazgin, or Vodolazgin is saying, we have these ideological camps and you have to toe the line of the camp and you can't ask why. And Yeah, the whole woke movement. I mean, and in some ways, I guess I can't even say that he says you can't ask why, but there is no room for discourse between the sides. It's, this is our ideology, therefore we believe it, right? And because our ideology is our ideology and we think it's correct, we're not going to dialogue with you, Yeah. right? That's the difficulty that you see with the left and the right. You know, you're starting to see this now with, you know, on the right with guys like uh, Matt Walsh and Michael Knowles. And actually, I think Michael Knowles was one of the first people to kind of get on this, where he said, you know, there is no right to unfettered free speech. Some books need to be burned. Some ideas have no right to exist in civilized society. Yeah. Right. And the left says the same thing about the right. You know, well, if you think that gender ideology, you know, in this case, if you think that uh that a teacher can't tell a five-year-old about some sort of ridiculous sexual um, position ideology. or yeah how how to masturbate right if you can't talk about these things with a with a five-year-old child as a more or less like i won't say a stranger because a teacher's not a stranger but someone who actually doesn't really know a lot about the personal life yeah. or the function of this uh, family excuse me leave that to me and my child right but on the left side of things they're saying okay well this is science if you oppose this, you oppose our ideology, therefore you oppose science, or but, some iteration of that. And that is this whole like return to a medieval worldview. And honestly, like I said, I think it's a good thing, because I do tend to agree with the whole notion that there are things that have no business in polite society. I think, for instance, if you... Oh, what would be a good example? If, if you go around making lewd comments about another man's wife that he should be able to engage in some kind of um, display of physical disagreement with yeah. you. And you deserved it. Like, if there were four or five people, or you know, if it's in a large crowd, right, or you're walking around somewhere in a city, and someone cat calls your wife or makes some lewd comment about your wife, and you overhear it, and you turn around and you you know, do what you got to do, obviously not kill them or anything like that, but you know, you smack them in the face. Well, you know, yeah. go, so you go full Will Smith. Yeah. Right? If you go full Will Smith the, on I mean, somebody. The first, the first thing you do is, you know, you could confront them, but I, I don't even think that's necessary. It's but, your do It's your duty as a man to, to protect your, your woman, especially in right. a situation and, like that. And, and I'm just giving this as a hypothetical example. I'm not saying that's necessarily what ought to occur, but that whole idea that there are things you just don't say, and if you say them, there are immediate consequences or consequences that swiftly follow. Is not a bad thing. That would create a better society, right? And the left, yeah, people would have to think about what they're going to say before they say it, right? What they what they publish before they publish it, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Well, I've got a coworker at the the place I'm working at right now who's, I mean, to be fair, he's a he's very very young at least as far as I can tell. I mean, he thought I was in my 40s for whatever that does. I love like, that so much. That, that I was rather perturbed by that. But, um, like, not even in a bad way. But, you know, he's a really young guy. And listening to the way that he speaks has kind of made me reevaluate the way that I speak because he's, I don't want to say that he's lewd, but he kind of is in his comment, in his commentary. And I want to judge him for it, but... I speak in a very similar way, although not quite as in, in such a, a lowbrow fashion as he does, but I speak in the same way and it's like, oh crap, like I need to, I actually need to pay attention to what I say and when I say things and how I refer to other people, because if I wish to have a, if I wish to live in a society that is fundamentally Christian. Well, you have to take accountability for yourself. Right. And I, I'm falling into the same uh, trap you could say at, at my work, you know. It's, I've said it before. It's it's weird. I'm in a medical field, but it feels like I'm in a construction yard. It's like oh, dude, people all that day work long. in the medical field. Being a former former medical professional myself, people who work in the medical field are crass and perverse. Oh yeah, it's some in of, an absurd way. It's some of like you, you the would most never if if 
if patients who were intubated could hear people in the ICU and the ER talk and remember what was said, there'd be some lawsuits. We'd all get fired. Yeah. Like, but it's bad. It's really bad. Yeah. But I just have to remember, like, first of all, don't fall into the same patterns as, as that person, but also don't judge them because, you know, right. I've got my own things going on and I'm, I'm probably just as perverse, whether I say it out loud or not. It's like, right. You know, just like we, we've talked about it before and, uh, our spiritual father has talked about it and I'm sure many members of clergy has, it's like, if someone calls you a thief and you say you're not, you better be bloody sure you're not. And you better be <laughs> sure you've never stolen or even had a thought about stealing. It's this, and it's the same type of thing as me. It's like someone in my workplace says something very crude and I'm like, want to judge them. But I also like, I've probably done the thing they've said like, or said it. They just thought it. it. I've actually done yeah. the thing. Yeah. You know? But the going back to the Disney thing for just a moment. Oh, we got, we got, we got a, a bit left of the Disney thing. I, I think that... The people who believe this is a first order of business. So the notion of triage, I think, is fairly common. People are aware of what the term means. They're aware of what it entails practically, right? This is a time to triage our culture. And this yeah. is a call to triage our culture. This is not to say that we write off these people and say, okay, yeah, screw them. Or they're going to hell or whatever. I mean, if you say somebody's going to hell, then you better spend a lot of time on your knees in front of your iconostasis and confessing to your priest because you have just applied a standard to someone else that now Christ is going to apply to you. Yeah. Even in traffic, our spiritual father has told us before, like I've done that. And go like, to hell. I that's yeah. It's like, uh, okay. You did just damn somebody. Yeah. Damn somebody because they were going four miles an hour slower than you wanted to. Yeah. It's like, that's bad. Not to, not to, but when it comes to this, it's the same type of thing when it comes, when it comes to this, because right. it's such a hard thing to not, to not be judgmental or, or feel that hatred in your heart towards mm -hmm. And I've been trying to really uh, reflect on it, and it's such a cliche saying, but not to hate the sinner, but to hate to sin, because this the people that are pushing this agenda, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it, they're sick in the head. Well, let, let, let's try a different uh, iteration of that phrase. So instead of saying "love the sinner, hate the sin," love the afflicted, hate the demon. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what's causing this. This is a demonic affliction. And pray for, and pray for them. Right. Pray for the whole world. Right. Ask the mother of God to protect us. Ask Christ to protect us, you know. Right. That being said, going back to the notion of triage, what we need to do, and I think this is probably the best notion, obviously, I wouldn't be saying what we need to do. Um, children are the ones who are being targeted by this explicitly. Young children, Right progressing up through high school and various other yeah it's like various other it's um, like five to si five to 16 degrees. or five to right. 11 is like their target demographic right. i read so the priority is to prevent them from being harmed any further so in triage when you're working a mass casualty event right where there's 15 25 30 40 people that are injured what you're going to do or at least what you do if it's really really bad and there's only a couple of first responders there is you go around and you categorize people like, okay, this person is green. They're walking wounded. They may not even need treatment here. So we're going to get them out really fast. We're going to get them squared away and ready to go. So it's like tag them with some, you know, with a piece of green tape or usually use like a green clothespin, right? Something like that. Green, get out of here. Like start walking, get them out. Then you walk around and go, okay, here's yellow. This guy's got a broken arm. He's still technically walking wounded, but he definitely needs treatment. He's hurting, you know, and he's got a gash above his eye or whatever, or a tooth or two knocked out. Something. It's like, okay, he needs some treatment. He might need some further evaluation because he's probably got some other stuff going on. Or maybe Pro even someone who's probably got a broken leg. concussed or something as well. Right. Or it's like, okay, well, this guy's got a broken leg, so he needs to be carried out, but we can still get him out pretty quick and we don't need to be with him. Right. It's like, okay, so you get, you tag those people yellow, you get them out. Now you, so if let's say out of 40 people, that's 19 of your casualties. It's like, okay, we've got 19 people out. So we've at least theoretically saved 19 people from fairly immediate trauma and damage, at least further trauma and damage. So then you go around and you see people like, okay, these people are red. So these are people that's like, okay, well, this guy's got like, He's unconscious, he's still moving air, but he's unconscious, and if I look at him, I can see that he's got, like, a bunch of trauma in his chest. So he's probably, if he stays out here for too many more minutes, he's dead. But he can still be probably worked on. It's like, okay, so... He can still be saved. Yeah, so you tag him, Red, and let's say there's seven of those guys. That puts you at, what, the 30, 36? 
and then you go around and there's four four people that you see one of them's got like both legs miss you know they've, they've got injuries that are roughly equivalent to like both legs missing and penetrating chest and abdominal trauma right so you go around and you tag those guys blue they're not dead but they will require so many resources to maybe save that your reds and your yellows might die or get hurt even worse right so because let's say you're, you, because you're paying attention yeah you burn resources on these four people right and let's say one of them lives but you burn 50 percent of your resources on these four people and you suffer 75 percent casualties on them but that costs you five of your 11 or five of your reds or something like that or five of your reds and two of your yellows right like that's what we have to do here these people i'm not going to say that they're blues for lack of a better phrase but they're definitely yellows or reds kids are greens right college students maybe yellows maybe society, these people are society reds. as a whole i would say for right. sure is red we need to get the people who are blues and green or who are reds not reds geez who are greens and yellows out before we get the other people because yeah. they are the ones who we know can theoretically be saved and i don't want to say no in the sense of we know they'll be in heaven if they die because we don't know such a thing but we have a really high or our odds are really good that we can save them from this right these people who have been you know the, the gal what was her name um Raven, uh, Raveno? Something Raveno? Yeah, Raveno. Like, she's, her, her commentary indicates that she's been doing this for like 30 years, right? Yeah, she's been doing it for a while. She's really sold out on this ideology. And like I said, that doesn't mean that she can't be r rescued from the demon that is, from, from this demonic ideology. But she is the one who is deepest in that cave, and we need to get the people out of that, out of that demonic hellhole that we can get out first. Yeah. Because they're the ones, it, the, the more people who fall in, the more we have to deal with, right? So we and, need and to the get less the ones we know we can get. the less resources we have, right. potentially. Right. And like I said, that's not to say that you have to get every single child squared away before you even think about going for her. But right now we know that... The people that are at the head, the executives of Disney, they're the ones right. who need to be called out. Right. They need to be called out, and that means they're going to have to endure some degree of mental and emotional suffering, Right. But well, it's, that's it's, the case for any passion, and any it's nothing, kind of demonic affliction. Well, it's nothing compared to the type of um, emotional and mental help that these children are going to need once once they've been indoctrinated by this the queer agenda, the alphabet soup, whatever. Alphabet soup Nazis. Yeah, whatever whatever we want to call it. But yeah, I agree. It's like we we need a triage on society as a whole, on the nation. And I do like your analogy with with the colors and color coding things. It's a uh, it's, it makes sense. It's uh, right. we're in the red. We, right. we may even be in and, the blue. And, and I'll put that and I'll say this to further the analogy a little bit more. No one is blue until they're dead in this specific analogy, right? Um, or at least in the, in the particular yeah. example that we're giving. Raveno or whatever her name is, is not unsavable until she's dead. And even then. None of us are. And even then, specifically for the Orthodox and the Catholics in the audience. We can still pray for her soul, right? We've shared the um, example. I, I don't know if we've talked about St. Gregory the Dialogist. Yeah, praying for the dead. But people, according to the tradition, of, the tradition of the church, have been taken from hell and brought to paradise by the intercessions of those still living. Yeah, it's a beautiful so thing. So we should do so, right? And I, I think, I don't remember if we talked about it or if I wrote something for you on that topic. I, I can't remember anymore. But... That's how we need to view this. Like, don't write anyone off utterly. If you get the chance to try to help them, help them. Yeah, and Father Josiah Trenum has right. uh, that four-part lecture series on transgenderism. Right. And it's beautifully, he's kind of, you know, on, on the same page. He's like, this isn't okay, but we need to we need to still show these people help love. Help who and we can help. Help who we can help. So, yeah, I, I right. agree. I think um, the next thing I wanted to get into was there's uh, two more videos from some more Disney execs, if if you can handle that. Well, so, yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but you, basically, uh, I'm OK. We're having a little cap off, I believe. But yeah, Disney, the president of entertainment, wants 50 percent of, you know, characters to be identifiably 
gay or queer. And it seems like there's like a big shift happening in the mouse house, we could say, where, <laughs> you know, I've never heard Disney referred to as the mouse house. Where Mickey Mouse may no longer be dating Minnie, but be dating another gentleman mouse instead. So, you know, things, things like that may happen. It's kind of, a, kind of the That's route. Seriously a thing. Yeah. It's what it says somewhere in here. Yeah. At the beginning, I'll, I'll pull it up. Wow. I hadn't heard that yet. That's uh so let's see. I'll... This is turning into another does Nate know, except does Nate that's know actually that quite horrifying Mickey not just Mouse that I find weird. Yeah. So I'll read read a little bit of this and then I'll watch a few videos. So Carrie Burke, president of Disney's general entertainment content announced on a company wide Zoom call Monday that as the mother of two queer children, one transgender and one pansexual, she elaborated. She intends to drastically ramp up queer so, visibility. So the idea of pansexual is that you are attracted to everyone, theoretically, yeah. right? Wouldn't that make you bisexual? Well, technically, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but... Uh, also, on that note, you know, bisexuals are the real problem for the alphabet soup Nazis because they're the only ones, who, they're the ones in that group who actually think there are only two genders. Yeah, male and female. They only <laughs> yeah. like male and female. Right. Yeah, LGBT, LGB bisexual rainbow phobes but yeah i mean she's the mother of two queer children uh you know lord have mercy that's and you know it's even more obvious that she's the one who wants to start pushing this stuff but she's saying that you know they want to increase the lgbtqia i'm not even sure what that stands for or other underrepresented minorities by a whopping 50 percent which uh you know real briefly with them saying the other underrepresented minorities by a whopping 50 percent um, pretty soon that's going to be white people that are going to be the <laughs> underrepresented minorities in movies because it's all going to be gay, transgender, you know. Well, so. let's be fair. If we're going to talk about race and minority for a moment, there is no race of white people any more than there is a race of black people or a race of Asian people. Those are not things. <laughs> yeah. Like... You, you want to talk about quote unquote white people it's like, okay, so are we talking about the, do, do we consider Iranians to be white because they're Indo-European and they tend to be paler skinned, but they're not Anglo-Saxon as people like to say all white people are in the United States. Or like the term Caucasian, which got recently removed from Wikipedia because it's- Wh What? Yeah, Cauc the Caucasus Mountains. Something the Caucasus I Mountains. Yeah, yeah. Caucasian is very specific. It's a Slavic term. Yeah, they removed it. I'm pretty sure. Or not I'm not a Slavic sure term, but it refers to a Slavic people. I'm not sure if it's back up, but they removed the word Caucasian. And it's funny because they didn't know what you just said, that it's it doesn't just mean white people. It's a very specific region of people who right. have a white skin well, color. I mean, lest we forget, or, you know, if you tend to live in a place where you don't get tons of sun you tend to be whiter. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of just uh, how it works. You know? Oh, uh, yeah. So... And if you live in a place where you get a lot of sun, you tend to be darker. Interestingly, a lot of Asians, generally speaking, specifically in parts of China, tend to be very white. <laughs> yeah. So Burke indicated that her plan is uh, a response, obviously, like we said, to the Florida's just say gay law, which doesn't say the word gay at all. In it, it's basically a law that prohibits teachers from discussing sexuality and gender identity in a manner in a manner that is not age appropriate as we mentioned earlier you know trying to uh read books during story time or teach your child how to masturbate when to masturbate and stuff like that which first of all is a conversation between the parents and the child but also and the and your priest, priest if you're orthodox yeah. or catholic in which the conversation should be don't don't yeah exactly so yeah it's like the whole just say gay law was to keep teachers from indoctrinating children in the classroom, you know, kindergarten to third grade, I think is what it says here. That being said, the entertainment giant has been making changes for some time now since last summer. They removed all the gendered greetings from their live spiel at the parks, such as saying, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So now when you go to Disney, it's basically, you know, hello, everyone, or hello, friends, which... Isn't creepy, Mickey Mouse, which isn't creepy at all. Hello, I mean, I, I can't even do a Mickey Mouse impression. Hello, friends. Yeah, it's it's pretty. Yeah. That was pretty bad, but yeah. it's it sounded bad to me. So I, I apologize to anyone who heard that. So uh, Chris Rufo 
he posted some of the videos. That's just who's linked here. But we'll go ahead and play the video from uh, Disney corporate president Carrie Burke, um, the mother of two transgender children, and see what she has to say. I'm, I'm here as a mother of, of two queer children, actually, um, uh, one transgender child um, um, and one pansexual child, um, and, and also as a leader. Um, and that was the thing that really got me because I have heard so much from so many of my colleagues over the course of the last couple of weeks um, in open forums and through emails and phone conversations and um, I feel a responsibility to speak, um, not just for myself, but for them, uh, to all of us. We, we had a we had an open forum last week at 20th where, um, again, the home of, of really incredible groundbreaking LGBTQIA stories over the years where um, one of our execs stood up and said, you know, we only have a handful of queer leads in our content. And I went, what? I, that can't be true. And I and I and I realized, oh, it it actually is true. We have many, many, many LGBTQIA characters in our stories, and 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 yet we don't have enough leads um, and narratives in which gay characters just just get to be characters um, and and not have to be about gay stories. And so um, that's been very eye opening for me. Um, and, and I, I can tell you, um, it's something that I feel perhaps had this moment not happened. Um, I, as a leader and me, as my colleagues would not have focused on and, and going forward, um, I, I certainly will be more so I know that we will be. And, um, and I hope this is a moment where shoot, um, the 50% of the tears, <laughs> sorry, are coming. Um, uh, we don't, we just don't allow each other to go backwards. Okay. I need to say before Ian says anything, the whole phrase, we don't allow each other to go backwards is absurd on its face. There are quite obviously times where it is necessary and healthy and wise and safe to go backwards, such as, you know, when you're, if, if you're particularly emotionally overwrought and you're about to cut your wrists yeah probably you should probably bite. go back to where you don't have the knife in your hands and you don't want and you and you want to cut your wrist yeah. go back from that and that's kind of funny you say that because i'm going to put this on the screen look at their the walt disney company reimagine tomorrow <laughs> it's like i was i was telling nathan while we had the our audio muted it's like i don't know which is worse build back better or reimagine tomorrow and i said how about uh go back to yesterday and Nathan said like how about we go back to 1936 when we knew what genders really were you know it's like what does reimagine tomorrow even mean well, well that actually ties back into that whole conversation we had with Isaac a few episodes back where we were talking about GK Chesterton's view of science fiction yeah and the problem with science fiction is it places you as the ancestor and therefore the one who's deserving of respect yeah which is a very horrifying thing when you think of it. And it's, it's one of the reasons why I think we talked about in that particular episode that I really like Warhammer 40k because there's this whitewashed version of what the past was that's not what the past actually was. You know, and it's it's the, the ancestors are they're like, oh yeah, they're so great. And it's like, you go to the present when the ancestors are there and it's like, no, they're like, yeah, we're actually trying to do the good things, but we're actually really horrible people. <laughs> And, and also with her being, you know, the corporate president or whatever, having two transgender kids, it's like, of course. She doesn't have two transgender kids. There's no such thing. I I agree. But I just think it's like, well, you guys have like the perfect spokesperson here. You know, it's like she's been waiting for this opportunity and she's probably the one who told her kids, obviously. I mean, it, it takes someone ahead of the household or I mean, who knows where the father's at. In this situation, but she has probably, you know, given her children the go ahead to, you know, do hormone replacement or whatever it may be. And it doesn't even say how old they are. But when when someone says transgender children, that's disturbing. You know, uh, I saw a shirt the other day. I'm not going to say where I saw it because who knows, but uh, I saw a girl wearing a shirt that said protect trans kids. And uh, I thought of a lot of ways we could we could protect them, <laughs> you know, uh, but yeah. remove them from the influence of people like you. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's what we're dealing with here. But uh, we'll do another one, then we'll kind of 
give try our, to wrap it up. Yeah, give our final thoughts on it. And this, I, I will say here at the get go, I thought we could do this in thirty minutes. Yeah, no way. <laughs> I mean, we could keep going, but I have to spend t- time with my child so he doesn't end up. Uh, like he's, this. he's on a good track. I hope so. Oh uh, yeah. So this one is going to be from the production coordinator, Alan March. You know, talking about his team being committed to exploring queer stories and has created a tracker to make sure they're creating enough gender non-conforming characters, whatever the heck that means, canonical trans characters and canonical bisexual characters. So these people don't even know what they're saying at this point. It's quite sad. Uh, Yeah, here we go. I've had the privilege of working with the Moon Girl team for the last two years. And they've been really open to exploring queer stories. And part of, I'm on the production side, uh, part of uh, the work that I feel like I can put in is um, making sure that we take place in modern day New York. So making sure that that's like an accurate reflection of New York. So I put together like a tracker of our background characters to make sure that we have like the full breadth of expression. And uh, we got into a very similar conversation, Carrie, of like, oh, all of our like, gender non-conforming characters are in the background. And so it's not just a numbers game um, of how many LGBTQ plus characters you have. We got the further, uh, the, the more centered a story is on a character, the more nuanced you get to get into their story. And especially with like trans characters, you can't see if someone is trans. There's not one way to look trans. And so kind of the only way to have these like canonical trans characters, canonical asexual characters, canonical bisexual characters is to give them stories where they can like be their whole selves. Be their whole selves. Wow. Profound things from bearded Humpty Dumpty over here. (laughs) I'm I'm sorry. I yeah, shouldn't no. I shouldn't be I calling know. him names. No, but... I I know. We're we're having we're allowed we're allowed to have fun, man. Right? But I mean Am I wrong? Even the guy sign language. <laughs> am I wrong? <laughs> That's what he looks like. It, it's it's weird. It's like even it appears that like despite parental and fan disapproval, like Walt Disney's just gonna continue doing gay stuff. Like even though there's people speaking out, especially <laughs> There's been people that work at Disney who are either on the side of this whole transgender movement, or there's people who are like, uh, I quit. And Disney just doesn't care. They're like, yeah, we're still going to make Mickey Mouse gay. It doesn't matter what you think. Who cares? <laughs> well, th- th- this gets into an, an actually theological issue, which is they're talking about, oh, yes, you have to see these gay or trans or bisexual, which is just situational straightness and situational homosexuality um we have to show these characters as their whole selves now these people are obviously scientific materialists because but that doesn't work with the whole notion of transgenderism yeah if you want to show their because if, if you're going to show someone's whole self on camera that can't be anything about their mental or spiritual state yeah it doesn't matter how they feel Right. That is just their physical aesthetic. However, if you're going to say that there is such a thing as a trans person, which there is not, you have to assert that there is some sort of metaphysical femaleness or metaphysical maleness that can be accidentally poured into the wrong flesh bag. <laughs> like, I'm serious. That's, that's, that's the necessary implication of that. Uh. And I mean, the, the humorous part, oh, here, so here's a funny story for you. So when, when I was attending NAU and this, when, when I first started doing my history degree, which was, oh man, it was like 2014 or 2015. So it's been a, it's been a couple minutes back. Um, I had a lesbian professor who was read, who had us read, um, she, she was teaching early American history. So like you know early early 16th through like late or through early 19th century uh, american history if my memory is correct it's been a hot minute but at the beginning of the class she had us reading these very archaic texts where it's 
and, and her whole purpose was to make Christians look stupid. But it's like, oh, look at these, you know, uh, these Puritans or these, you know, Anglicans or Catholics who thought that men could become or women could become men given the appropriate uh, circumstances. And like, actually, it was just an explanation of theoretical Aristotelian biology. They didn't actually think that, but it was something like, okay, well, theoretically, this could happen in, in these circumstances. And then a woman would become a man. And she ridiculed that as being the parody of stupidity, which at the time was true. It is the parody of like the definition of, or not the parody. It is the prime example of stupidity, which in many ways it kind of is. But fast forward a couple of years and I had a friend uh, who also became Orthodox around the same time that I did, who took, who was taking, uh, who was completing his uh, undergraduate in history. And he took a class with her that was, and this was like 2017 or 2018. And at that time, she had adopted transgender ideology. So she was saying that she was a non-binary lesbian or a non-gendered lesbian. I don't know, some, 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 some absurdly bizarre gender that doesn't exist that flew in the face of what she said three years prior. These people have no intellectual consistency and no credibility. They know nothing. They are so empty that they have to, whatever the, whatever the newest sexual fad is, they have to do it in order to feel complete. But much like being an alcoholic or a heroin addict, that only works at a low, at a, at a minuscule level once. Yeah. And then you have to keep on going up that tier. Yeah. Or rather descending. <laughs> You have to keep going deeper and deeper and finding crazier and crazier things to feel like you're something. Yeah. So with that being said, I'll play one more thing. Cause uh, I mean, this is, this might seem like a little bias, but there's going back to like the staged walkouts between, you know, there's, you know, both sides. I just wanted to share one of these videos and I'm not, I'm, I'm assuming it was a secular movement, but their last month, Disney employees, um, staged week long walkouts, you know, uh, protesting the don't say gay bill, but there was also some, uh, backlash with that, with people, uh, holding signs saying like, you know, defund Disney, <laughs> Disney stop sexualizing our children. Uh, Disney is demonic, uh, all while chanting, um, boycott Disney. So yeah, I'm going to play this real quick. Glory yeah. to God, there is yeah. some sanity in the world. Exactly, and it says that um, although Disney initially disappointed its legions of LGBTQ fans by failing to address the Florida bill, the company eventually said in a statement that it should never had passed and should never have been signed into law and published and promised to establish a task force. That's going to be hilarious. <laughs> to ensure that Disney is a force for good for the LGBTQ community. At Wednesday's protest, attendee Marcos Zelada Rosas told Fox, I just want to protect children. I don't think that Disney promoting these task force that are trying to include the LGBTQ agenda on them at such a young age is a good idea. And another protest protester who said she is a cast member at Anaheim's Disneyland took to the stage to tell the crowd, I've worked for Disney for quite a long time and it has gotten very political and it's gotten very hard to be who you are and it's gotten very hard to be someone who has conservative values, Daily Mail reports. So yeah, let's see uh, what this says. Cast member here at the, well, for Disneyland, actually, I've been with them for quite a long time and it's gotten very political and it's gotten very hard to be who you are. It's gotten very hard to be someone who has conservative values, someone who believes in the right to choose, somebody who believes that it's okay to stand up for righteousness. It is okay to stand up for righteousness. Any Disney cast members that are afraid to be bold, that are afraid to be courageous, stand up. It's okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a very, uh, I recognize one of the guys in there. He does a lot of like uh, Protestant evangelizing and holds a lot of rallies where he'll get like Satanists will show up to these rallies and throw blood on him or Jeez. or like throw heroin needles at, at children. It's uh, pretty, pretty disturbing. But I, reg regardless, it's good to see that there's at least some people standing up against this nonsense. I, I still really dislike what she said, though. 
because she's still, yeah. she's still under this impression that coexistence can occur and it, it's 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 the same as like in, in many ways this issue is kind of a more absurd parody of the abortion debate because for a long time conservatives have treated the abortion debate and in the last few years the uh, alphabet soup nazi debate like coexistence is possible right you can't coexist with someone who thinks it's okay to murder a child. Yeah, you or... can't coexist with someone who thinks it's okay to mutilate and torture a child and, and and emotionally abuse them and sexually abuse them. That's not a thing that deserves respect. It's not an idea that deserves to be bandied about. You know, there, there was a time, and actually a, a good friend of mine who is a practicing homosexual, um... He, he and I both shared a very similar uh, employment history. And we came into that field in a generation when if you came in and said, you know, with a child and it came out that you had sexually abused that child, you had better hope to God there's a cop there because somebody in that ER is going to kill you. Yeah. I had friends that assaulted the abusers of children, right? Fortunately, I never had to find myself in that circumstance. Glory to God, because God knows I would have done the same thing. Like, you can't coexist with that kind of thing. If someone is engaging in something that is utterly and beyond, you know, evil beyond the pale, you know, you, you can't turn away from it. That, that one of the the comparisons that modern Americans use because they know nothing else about history is this whole bit of, I can't believe the Holocaust happened in Germany. How could so many people in a country allow such great evil to happen? And, you know, when people say this nowadays, I'm like, do you know how many children we've murdered? Yeah. And no one cares. I mean, I, I don't want to say no one cares, but the, a, gr a much greater evil has happened. The Holocaust hit Hitler's it's, hands. We it's had, just what, become like, like a conservative talking point to people. Yeah. It's merely a talking point. It's like, oh, you're pro li you're you're pro life. Yeah, it's it's like you, Yeah. The the Holocaust at max, we can say killed maybe 11 million people, maybe 12 if you're going to be really generous. Right? We have killed, so what, it's been about a million babies a year since Roe v. Wade was passed in, what, 76, 74, 76? Yeah. So if we're going to go with the million babies a year since 76, that puts us at oh, wait. 50, almost 50 million babies. Like, we're on par in half a decade, less than half a decade, to catch up with the Soviet Union and China put together in another 30 years. Yeah. That's impressive, and, and not in a way that we should be. And proud it's the of. same people that we see pushing the the LGBTQ agenda, right? And and real quick before before we log off, I mean this this might kind of lead us on another tangent. What I've noticed is um, that there's a lot of there's a lot of people who have this ideology of being transgender or non non binary. And I see it all the time, like in Flagstaff walking around town, like you see like a 26 year old girl with purple hair. You know a, exactly what she thinks. And a Disney backpack. Yep. Or Disney nails or Mickey Mouse shirt. Or wearing the Mickey Mouse ears. A lot of people do that for some reason. Yeah. And I'm just like, it's, it's not what he, like when we grew up, yes, Disney was corrupt, but at least, I don't know if it's worse, but at least it was subliminal. Like, well, it wasn't. You, you it could, wasn't you could avoid it. Like the, the comparison yeah. that we had as kids, and I mean, you you might have a slightly different view of this than I do, but like the comparison that we had as kids was, oh, whichever Disney prince marries whichever Disney princess, that means they call each other honey and dear and get in fights sometimes. Yeah, like that's what that means. And now we're gonna have. And then you get older and you're like, oh yeah, that means they engage in proper marital relations in a very rigid and formal context. Yeah. But it, it never entered my mind to go, oh, precisely what are the mechanics of their romantic relationship? It was like, okay, well, Prince Charming kissed, um, what, what's her name in Sleeping Beauty? Um, um, I know, but yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, yeah, now they get to live together and that entails some things that I'm not familiar with, but I... Like it never entered my mind to ask but now, what those things were. But now it's like overtly perverse. Yeah. They're like, let's make two guys kiss. Yeah. In the background. It's like their subliminal messaging has reached a different level. It's like it used to be, you know, a phallic symbol on the front cover that you had to look for. And then it got debunked, but then it found out. Well, it got debunked and then we find this and it's like, did it really get debunked? Exactly. But now it's like, no, we're going to put two people of the same sex kissing in the background. We're going to 
subliminally insert this stuff. And we're also not just going to subliminally in- insert it. We're going to make a whole, cause now if you go watch the proud family, I watched like a couple clips of it and it's like, there's obviously gay characters and there's tons of movies that are coming out where mm-hmm. they are obviously gay or they're trying to portray this like struggle of, I don't I'm not allowed to be gay in society. Like I think I'm gay. And it's like, uh, well, and one of the other things that needs to be pointed out just as a matter of housekeeping is oh, one of the criticisms that has been leveled against conservative Christians or just Christians in general when it comes to this whole notion of various entities discussing sexuality with children is, oh, you just think you, you just want there to be heter- heterosexual um, sex ed. It's like. No, if you go back to the '90s, you'll recall that concert in you know '80s and '90s, you'll recall that I don't want any. I don't didn't want, want sex. Yeah, I don't want you talking to my child about how to have sex with women, how to, how yeah. to have sex with men, how to touch himself, or any of those things. Right. I don't want you talking to my child about any of that. How about you leave that to me and right. our spiritual father when, and our priest? When, when you get into high school and are studying biology, and it's like, okay, there are obviously two variant reproductive systems because if by the time you're 16 you haven't realized that girls and boys are slightly different minus like the the <laughs> what is it like the one percent of people who are who are actually born with both organs well it's actually less than that it's, it's like, like zero it's 1.1 like like percent a tenth of a percent if not lower i don't want to give the exact stats because somebody will be like well the actual stat it's is, actually 0.17 percent whatever yeah. um, either it's, way it's, it's a very small percentage of people who are actually born intersexually Right, it, it intersect with it's inter intersex intersection whatever it is. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's not transgender. The, the proper place for discussing sex discussing sexual ethics is within the family and within your spiritual community. Yeah, within your religious community, because shocker of shockers, there are variant sexual ethics within Christianity. Protestants are okay with things that Catholics and Orthodox are not. Yeah, I mean, Jews you... are okay are not okay with things that Orthodox and Protestants are. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was right? in Phoenix for a music a music event, and we drove by an Episcopalian mm-hmm. church, and it was like all genders welcome, and they had a gay flag out front, and I was like, <laughs> okay. Well, did you hear that uh, bit about a? I believe it was an Episcopalian preacher as well, obviously a female preacher, who was praying to the God of pronouns. Yeah. It's a shame that we don't have an inquisition to excommunicate people on a grand scale anymore because that is definitely required. We could um we'll yeah, we'll wrap this up but we'll we'll show that on the next one. We'll we'll get into that at some point. Uh, I was talking to David Patrick Harry. Shout out David Patrick Harry, Church of the Eternal Log- uh, Logos and uh What's up, dude? We've never talked but I like your work. Yeah. The bits of it I've seen. We're going to we're going to do some stuff us us three and I sent him that video and he he said, "Oh god." He goes, this will be a stream. And I was like, hold up. It will be, but it'll be our, it'll be, hopefully it'll be our You're stream. A guest with us. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll dive into some interesting topics, but to, to wrap things up, um, this is something we, we wanted to touch on because it's, uh, hot off the press. It's pretty, pretty disturbing. And I, I hope that, you know, I, I pray to God that we, we try to be as charitable as possible, but we also wanted to expose the darkness that we're seeing, especially, you know, I'm a father and Nathan has God children and, you know, he's basically a, a yeah. godfather to, to my child, uh, you know, unofficially, but it's like, we, we really got to do our best to protect children, you know, from this, but also there's, there's a lot of things that, that we need to do. Um, but yeah, any final thoughts? I want to wrap it up so that I can go triage, uh, triage. Well, don't, yeah. Don't condemn anyone out of hand, but recognize when your efforts are being wasted. Yeah, and also, you know, um, if you're if you're talking to someone and all they're gonna do and all they're doing is saying that you're this phobic or that phobic and you hate science and you hate kids, you're wasting your time. Pray yeah. for them if you you know if you know their if you can find out their name or if you know their name, so much the better. Pray for them, but you're wasting your time. Yeah, the. People who are devoted to abusing children or killing children or, you know, or murdering people or stealing or whatever else need prayer more than they need argument. Argument never converted anyone. Not that I've ever met. So, yeah, I've had know, com- be, be tactical, be strategic. Yeah, don't, I've had don't waste your time. I've had conversations with people recently about it where they assume since I'm Christian that I 
hate gay people and i had to correct them you know and said uh you you must you must not understand what it, what it means to be a christian right and i'm not i'm not claiming to be a good christian but i'm saying it's like no i still love you right but i mean the movement itself and what we're seeing it do to our children and to our society um the people who are involved i think there's going to be a big portion of them just like we see a lot of people who claim to be transgender and then one day they wake up and they realize what the heck have i done i think i think we're going to see something like that in the future hopefully we see you know some well, sort of digress from this type of uh, to, to draw evil. the to draw the parallel with abortion we've seen that with a lot of people who used to work in abortion in, in the abortion industry they have you know they saw various things or heard various things that made them completely reconsider what they were doing and they have become the strongest advocates yeah. for the unborn they've saved country. more babies than they well, yeah. but th that goes to the notion of they have repented mightily. One, you know, one of the great patristic, or not patristic quotes necessarily, but it's a patristic theme and a Christian theme is mighty sin requires mighty repentance. Yeah, and we and spoke that, about that in the Saint Mary of Egypt yeah. one that didn't that didn't yeah. get uh, posted. But if you've never read the life of Saint Mary of Egypt, that's a prime example yeah. of repent mightily if you've done something. I mean, I I, I don't want to say if you've done something bad because if you're alive and you're not six months old you've done you've something. done some bad stuff or you've thought about it but yeah saint mary of egypt has we just commemorated her on uh, april 1st i believe it was first or fourth yeah i don't remember it was it was recently last and couple of days one of the most beautiful and blessed saints that we have in the orthodox church uh one of the first i heard about so uh, i'll put a link to the to her life in in the description but yeah with that being said be strategic guys god bless i mean this is a this is a gnarly thing. Yeah. Um, it's a demonic thing. And, I mean, and let's and, call it what it is. It's not just sketchy. It's demonic. And anyone who's listening who, you know, who, if we, if we have offended you or I don't want to say offended, but um, we're, I'll just say this. We are here for you and we will pray for you. And if you're struggling with these passions or any other passions, just, just like me and Nathan are, uh, reach out to us, reach out to your spiritual father, first and foremost, your priest. Um, find an Orthodox Church, find a community of people. It's, you know, as much as the internet and the online sphere can be detrimental to your mental and spiritual well being, it's also it's, it's a good uh, phone book for anyone who gets that reference. Yeah. I mean, it, never thought I'd utter it that. is, yeah. There's, there's words in that order. But <laughs> there's people on online that I that I talk to regularly that have really helped me. And also shout out to our Patreon members, uh Ian. So guys, thank you very here, much. Let's uh Let's do this because I want to start giving giving some shout outs to giving credit words to too. people. Yeah, shout out to Robert Trowbridge, shout out to Jay and Anders Madsen and uh, Ian. We we appreciate you. I know um, you you've been a tremendous help. Yeah, Ian, man. You, you you have talked to Ian about technical stuff that I know precisely zero things about. So and let us know how this the burden off my back. So I appreciate it. Yeah, let us know how this sounds and if you want your money back. <laughs> so get a hold of Ian, not me. Yeah, we'll go from there. But yeah, God bless you. Uh, may the Lord guide and protect you, and may Cheers. the Holy Mother of God uh, intercede for us and for the whole nation and for the whole world, because the uh, Lord knows that we need it now more than ever. So it's only through the intercessions of the monastics that God has forborne the destruction of the world. Yeah. Amen. Well, God bless you guys, and we will see you soon. Make sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends and family, and become a Patreon member for exclusive content, and this video will be up. And it's exclusive days. tobacco. Yeah. Cheers, exactly. guys. Cheers.